Hey everybody. Yeah, so last time we found the uh, the attributes about the customer's minimum order by using something called a correlated subquery where we uh, matched elements from an inner query uh, to elements from an outer query. And that might have been a little bit confusing. It's okay though. It is confusing. That's why I'm recording it. And I'm talking about this in great detail. So Let's try a simpler strategy. This will definitely work with Postgres, uh, any, any database that supports common table expressions, and it's a little bit simpler. So first thing I did here was I just created a common table expression of first orders. So we have a customer ID and the minimum of their payment ID. So let's, um, let's select from it real quick. Okay, and we have our 599 rows. We'll just order by one to make sure no customer has more than one row. Great. And so now we have this, uh, we have this set of data. And what if we took, say we took everything uh, from payment P2, where P2 dot, um, let me call this as first payment where p2.payment ID was in, and all we did was we just got the um, select, let's uh, call it p3 from, actually, I'm gonna change the alias. First orders is fo, that makes more sense. So let me just get rid of that and highlight what we're doing here. So we're getting everything from payment P2, which is the full table, but we're restricting it to um, a where clause. And we're saying that we want the payment to be, the payment ID to be in this query. We're getting the first payment, which was this column that I renamed to first payment. Um, it wants to be in there. So let's see what happens. Okay, again, we get 599 rows which is great. If we order by two, which is the customer ID, we'll verify that we never see more than one row per customer. And that's great. We do see every customer has a unique row. So in my opinion, this is kind of a, a cleaner strategy. Again, create a common table expression, which we can use later in a subquery. And once you have that, you can just get the entire select or whatever columns you want from payment. Just making sure that using a where clause, you're saying that the payment ID is in the first payment IDs from your common table expression. So this is a good strategy. Um, it's clean when your queries get a lot larger, it's easier to work with them. If you do this versus what we did above here, where we have these, uh, these multiple correlated subqueries. Sometimes when you need to get like sale amounts for, for different date ranges relative to um, some date that's in the outer query, which we'll talk about later, this is a better strategy. Um, if you really only have one set of IDs that you need to filter on, probably easier just to create a, a common table expression and, and then do this. So. This was um, another strategy. I'm trying to think if there's a, yeah, there is one more. So I'm gonna cut this short and then we're gonna look at the solution using the, uh, the row number function and a, uh, a subquery too. So be right back.